Welcome back. Well, a flattish start on the Nifty is what we're seeing, but a lot of companies are reacting to its numbers. And Chola Mandalam Investment, well, they posted a mixed set of numbers. The business momentum looks strong, with the AUM rising close to around 20% in comparison to last year. Dispersals as well were up nearly around 70%. This, however, has not translated into profit growth. The NIMS have come down to around 7.6 percent odd, but that's something that the management had guided for in the last time we chatted. Well, Mr. Arun Selvan uh, D, the president of the company, as well as CFO, joins us. Hi, sir. Morning. Thanks so much for joining in. Well, a couple of uh, factors uh, we want to focus on. One is on the NIMS. They've come down to around 7.6 percent. Now, I think your cost of borrowing has moved up a little bit, and effectively, 50 percent of your borrowing is on floating rate. So what's the guidance on the NIMS from year on? Will it hold at around the 7.5%? And earlier you were guiding for AUM growth of around 15%, I think mid-teens. Do you want to revise that number? Yeah, the AUM growth uh, will be a little bit more stronger is the current uh, prediction going by what we have seen as the growth in Q2. And uh, we expect more traction on the uh, disbursements in the coming quarters being a good uh, festival uh, quarters as well as uh, good harvesting that's expected in the Q4. Uh, so we will look at around 20 to 22% AUM growth as we move forward in the, for the full year. Uh, and if uh, if things pan out better, it can even be better than that. Uh, uh, with regard to the NIMS, uh, I have spoken earlier also. For the full year, we expect the cost of funds to increase by around 50 to 60 basis points uh, going by the trend. Uh, and at, as of YTT level, the cost of funds is still lower than compared to last year. But uh, yes, uh, as a quarter on quarter, uh, that is Q1 versus Q2, there has been a drop <clears throat> because of the cost of funds increase. This is expected and this is what we have guided as you rightly pointed out. Uh, we expect the NIMS to hold uh, in around uh, the 50, 60 basis points, but that would also be predominantly driven by the mix of uh, what products we do. Uh, so that is something we will keep, uh, you know, revising as we move forward because the market, based on market, we will be moving with, I mean, scaling up or scaling down on the products that we do where the yields are very wide. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Selvan, uh, good morning. Uh, so, consolidated AUM was a growth 25% in the quarter. You're saying for the full year uh, should be somewhere in the region of, you said, 22 23%, right? Uh, Correct. Yeah. Uh, Q3 and Q4, uh, uh, but are, are good quarters, right? There is a bit of an acceleration. So, are you, yeah. how should one read this? I just want to be a little bit conservative, uh, you know, because while uh, monsoon is good, etc., we, we still want to see the traction that's happening in the SRTO segment, which we are focusing on with the vehicle finance. Mm. The, <clears throat> the the new businesses that we have been scaling up are of shorter tenor to a large part of the business. So there, the churn will be more, but it may not ultimately result in the AUM growth significantly. Mm -hmm. The LAP and HL are growing faster. They will contribute to, uh, to a large extent because they stay on the book for a longer period and that, that, that would be helpful. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we will we will give you a more, uh, you know, clearer or uh, reasonable target by end of Q3 rather than now because we, we, we want to assess Q3 before we give it. Uh, larger number on the AM growth. Sure, sure. Okay, so for now, we'll go with this 20 to 22 percent AUM growth target that you put out. Mr. Arul Selvan, uh, good morning. You know, within vehicle uh, finance, you um, cater to a lot of the segments, right? Whether it's two wheeler loans, commercial vehicles, tractors, even construction equipment. And since your loans are largely low ticket, you start from one lakh onwards. You'll be able to give us a better sense of how the rural market is recovering because we are seeing some nascent signs of recovery, but it's not as strong as what we're seeing in urban. So you tell us what is the situation on the ground and within the vehicle piece as well, which one is recovering uh, the fastest? Yeah, so the rural market uh, is, uh, as you know, highly dependent on the monsoon. While overall monsoon seems to be good uh, or you know above average. <laughs> 
pockets of areas have shown different you know levels of either shortfall in monsoon or you know some in some places exist so this to some extent skews the rural income so that's where we are also being little you know conservative with regard to our approach on committing higher numbers on aem growth uh, but uh, the way forward is looking at the coming festival seasons and a reasonably good harvest uh, you know for a predominant part of the country especially in the context that we are spread all over the country almost equally uh, so we would, while there could always be some regions or geographies where there can be impact we will see some amount of reasonable growth in the rest of the locations and the other factor that needs to be also considered is the government spending that is expected to happen uh, especially in the context of uh, elections coming up shortly so that should again put up more earning potential in the hands of the consum- consumers uh, triggering consumption and thereby triggering vehicle requirements uh, for movement of material uh, this is the long and short of it so we expect a reasonably good traction in um, in the rural segment and to some extent it will be dependent on a good harvest that comes up in the q4 all right so you know you said your cost of funds could go up by around 50 basis points but you are still sticking to nims of around 7.5% should we work with 7.5% or 7 to 7.5% yeah i i would say so see as the as uh, a little while back sonali mentioned uh, uh, sorry sonia mentioned um, <clears throat> the mix of our vehicle finance book is very wide we have you know uh, yields ranging from 10 10 and 1/2% to as high as 23 24% and we keep moving between these products in the context of how the demand picks up in which segment and we have the expertise to do any of these product lines we have demonstrated that over the period but that is the crux and that is also to a bit you know the reason for our success in spite of various uh, you know movements in the demand for various products but this has an impact on nim because the product yields are different but on the flip side the higher yield products will have higher opex and higher higher ncl so to that extent it will offset a bit so while we do higher yield product you may also have a higher opex so the nims can move depending on the product mix but the rota is what we focus on to make sure that we deliver a pre tax rota of around 3 to 3 and 1/2%. Mm. All right uh, Mr. Selvan thank you very much for joining us uh, good speaking with you appreciate uh, you joining in uh, with that perspective so uh, I mean the commentary is uh, good the guidance